like you love us, Lord. We thank you for we did not choose you, but you chose us, O oh God. And as we have worshipped and declared today, Father, we still want to be led of you. We still desire your guidance. We still desire to get more and more intimate with you, Lord. We worship you. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Even as we hear the word today, we pray that you may speak to each and every one of us, O oh God, for the glory, honor, and praise of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. 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 We bless the Lord for his faithfulness as we were declaring that we still need Jesus. Amen. It is the last Sunday of the year. And we can declare in this place that we have seen the goodness of the Lord. 2018 has been a year that has had its share of, of challenges, but it has also had its share of celebrations. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God for what he has done in our midst, in our lives. And we thank God for what he will continue to do even as we get to a new year. Praise the name of the Lord. And thank God because each and every one of us is going to finish strong. None of us shall finish discouraged. Amen. And I will, I'm continuing to declare that whatever was assigned for us, if there is a blessing that has your name on it, and it was a sign that you're supposed to receive it in 2018, I am declaring continually that we're not going to cross over and leave our blessings. Amen. Whatever is by, called by your name, it shall locate you. It doesn't matter whether we are we are just a few hours to the crossover, but I believe that our God is a faithful God. He is a promise maker, but he also is a promise keeper. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm awaiting, and yesterday one of the, something that I've been dealing with and has been so challenging, the Lord answered my cry yesterday and performed a miracle. And I, 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 was, I was signing it and ticking it off my prayer list with tears of joy and saying, wow, you are such a faithful God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't want to get into the details of what it was, but let me assure you that do not cease praying. Do not cease calling upon his name. Do not cease to trust in this God. Surely, as we have sung, he is a big, big God. He is mighty. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we may think all imagine praise the name of the lord and today i am going to make a conclusion of the topic we have been uh the service we have been covering we have been learning about jesus praise the name of the lord and today i have a question for you can you read with me that question let's read this question together who is jesus to you praise the name of the lord we have been learning who is jesus we have been learning his names. We have been learning what was promised when he was given to us, when he was given to the world as a gift. We have been learning of what he is able to do. Praise the name of the Lord. But today as we come to the conclusion, I want us to apply personally and reflect and be able to answer this question. Who is Jesus to you? Praise the name of the Lord. It is not about how somebody introduced Jesus to you. We say uh, we've been doing this the whole of this month. We've been introducing Jesus. When we meet new people, we have been saying that we are not alone. I have Jesus. Amen. We have been doing that and that has facilitated conversation where we have been able to share who Jesus is with our colleagues at work. We have been able to share who Jesus is with the people we meet at the grocery stores and all that. Praise the name of the Lord. So, now I want us to reflect. It is just about you. If I would ask you this question, and I will keep asking you this question, who is Jesus to you? Do you have an immediate answer? And when I talk about answering this question, I don't want just a theoretical answer. I don't want 
want you just to say, oh, he's my savior because you hear other people say he is your savior. Can you get to the place where you can describe who Jesus is to you because of how you have related with him and known him? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You want to give me an amen? I'm not going to come around and ask you the question so that you answer. Just give me an amen. Hallelujah. Who is Jesus to you? Who is Jesus to me? If I am to describe him, if I am to tell about him, if I am to tell somebody or if I am to share who Jesus is to me, how can I do it? How can I describe it? How can I relate him to the other people? Is it just what I hear other people say? Is it what you have heard me teach you? Or is it something that is from experience? Praise the name of the Lord. For you to be able to answer this question, you need to spend time with him. Praise the name of the Lord. So if there is, if you're writing those resolutions, those new year resolutions, one of the resolutions you should write down is that you want to spend more time with, you want to spend more time with Jesus so that you may continue to know him more and more. Praise the name of the Lord. So one time in the book of Matthew chapter 16, although that's not where we're going to read, in Matthew chapter 16, Jesus uh, met with the disciples and he asked them a question. He asked them, who do men say I am? And they had all kinds of answers. They said, some says you are Elijah. Others says you are Moses. Others says you are a prophet. And then Jesus was like, okay, that is what people say. Those people who do not know me so well. You know, you guys, I'm, I'm, I've been with you since I called you to become my disciples. I promise I'm going to make you fishers of men. I've been with you. So now stop telling me about what people say I am. Okay, now let me hear from you. Who do you say I am? And one of them, who will know the name? One of them by the name? Peter. Peter had an answer. He said, you know, you are the Christ. You are the promised Messiah. And Jesus looked at Peter and said, wow, you got it. But you know what? Flesh and blood did not reveal this. This is a revelation from above. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a revelation from above. So, when we are talking about who is Jesus to us? I want us to go step by step. And I'm going to give you stages. And by the end of it, I want you to be able to answer this question sincerely. Depending on where you are in your relationship with Jesus. So that you may be able to say, Jesus is this and this to me. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to read the Bible from the book of Luke, chapter 24. Luke, chapter 24. If you... No. Somebody... No. We said we are going to be using the Bibles. Amen. I'm waiting for you to settle down. Amen. Luke chapter 24. And we're going to read from verse 13. Uh, this is uh, after the selection of Jesus Christ. We're going to see a story of uh, two people who are disciples of Jesus. And from verse 13, the Bible says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score fallons. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Verse 16 says, but their eyes were holden that they should not know him. 
And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have one to another as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Has thou not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that he had been that which would redeem Israel. And beside all this today is a that day since these things were done. Yeah, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the scripture. And when they found not his body, they came saying, that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the scepter and found it even so as, as the women had said, but him they saw not. Verse 25 says, All fools, excuse me, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew near unto the village which they were going, and he made as though he would have gone farther. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening. And the day is fast spent. And he went into Tyre with them. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took the bread and blessed it. And broke and gave to them. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another. Did not our hearts burn within us? Well he talked with us by the way. While he opened to us the scriptures. And they arose at the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and, and them that were with them saying, The Lord is risen and in, indeed has appeared to Simon. Praise the name of the Lord. So I said I'm going to take you to a journey and we are going to take this journey with these two disciples or two followers of Christ Jesus. They took a journey to go to a city called Emmaus. And while they were walking, they are sad about everything that had happened. They had heard, they had seen with their eyes about how Jesus was crucified. And they had great hope in him. You know, the people and the disciples and the people of Israel in that era, they expected that Jesus is going to come and fight for them and defend them from the Roman Empire. They expect he is going to ride with an army and fight and defend them and redeem them. Praise the name of the Lord. But the way that the Lord had planned to redeem us was not the way that men were thinking. Because according to the word of God, our thoughts and his thoughts are very far apart. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says as far as the heavens are from the earth, that is how far our thoughts and God's thoughts are apart. So according to men, they expected that the Lord would come as a king and deliver them. But according to God, it was more spiritual. It was more about taking spiritual authority. It was more about redeeming man from the fall in the garden of Eden. It was about paying the penalty of sin. It was about going to the cross and becoming the ultimate praise. Paying our debt so that we may be free and free indeed. Praise the name of the Lord. So the disciples did not understand. When Jesus was crucified and was buried, they thought the chapters were crossed. They thought that that was their end. And here we find these two disciples walking very sad and just discussing about how their hope has been cut off. Praise the name of the Lord. 
And the Bible says that Jesus appeared to them. But their eyes were not able to discern that it was Jesus. And so Jesus asked them, what are these things you are talking about? And why are you sad? And they asked him this question. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? How comes that you don't know? It is just three days. It is the talk of the village. It is the breaking news. Every news outlet, every newspaper, if there were newspapers then, every Helen is talking about this. How comes you do not know? Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Praise the name of the Lord. And as I was reading this, I understand that sometimes we are strangers to Jesus or Jesus is a stranger to us before we know him praise the name of the Lord and so these people decided oh here is a stranger we don't know him we don't know where he has come from we cannot even understand why he does not know the current affairs but you know what hi stranger we were in the company of the man. Hi, stranger. We want to talk to you. Hi, stranger. We want to tell you details of what happened. We want to update you with the current affairs. Praise the name of the Lord. They did not push him aside. They did not despise him because he wasn't up to date. They did not ignore him. They did not just walk away from him. They took initiative to get to know him better. Praise the name of the Lord. And you know one thing I understand is that you don't go talking to strangers and telling them stuff. Or do you? Praise the name of the Lord. You know we meet strangers all the time, yeah? People you don't know. You meet them. You meet people who don't, you don't know all the time. You may have heard about somebody. You know, there are times I've gone for mission and I'm given a description of maybe somebody who's going to pick me up at the airport. And I get there and the person picking me up, I've never seen them. But I've been given a, a description. Sometimes it's how they are dressed. And so it's better now that we have cell phones that we can be able to, to communicate and tell the person, you know, I'm dressed in red, I'm dressed in black, I am standing here and there. And sometimes you will find that the same description that you have given, somebody else is dressed in the same colors. It has happened. And somebody comes up and says, hi, but to the wrong person because they don't know them. I'm trying to explain the concept of a, of a stranger. So to the, to the two disciples, Jesus was a stranger to them. But they decided that he will not remain a stranger. They want to take it to the next level. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm speaking to somebody today. If Jesus is a stranger to you, if all you know about Jesus is what others have described to you and you do not have a personal relationship with you, I want to encourage us to take that relationship to a next level. And we find that the disciples took it to the next level. They started sharing. They became friends. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. They started talk and they talked and they discussed and, 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 they, and they started telling Jesus, you know what? It wasn't long. The other day, this is what this man was doing. He was healing. He was raising their dead. He even fed people with bread and fish. He was a good man. They started sharing. They started telling him. And you know why? I see that they took it to the next level because they also shared their worst disappointments. Praise the name of the Lord. They got to that place where they told Jesus, we are part of that company. <laughs> we are part of the people who followed him. We thought he is going to be our redeemer. 
We thought he is going to deliver us. We thought he is going to come and rescue us from the oppression that we have been oppressed. They started sharing their worst disappointments. You only share that with a friend. Praise the name of the Lord. So I'm going to ask you this question I've been asking you. Who is Jesus to you? Is Jesus a stranger? Or have you taken it to the next level? Is Jesus a friend? Praise the name of the Lord. And we find that they took it to the, that level by even getting deeper and telling Jesus, you know what? Something strange happened. There were women from our company that went to the scepter in the morning. And when they went there, they saw a vision. You know, those things are intimate, intimate details. They are giving the person who was a stranger. He is no longer a stranger. They are sharing these intimate details. They are telling him, you know what? The women came and told us. And part of our company ran and they found that he is not there. They are sharing intimate, intimate details because Jesus is no longer a stranger to them but now he has become a friend praise the name of the Lord Amen. I ask you again this question who is Jesus to you is Jesus still a stranger a stranger you were introduced to by your mom when she took you to Sunday school by force <laughs> Or have you taken it to the next level of him becoming a friend where you can share all that you are going through, where you can share those intimate details, where you can share what is oppressing you, where you can share what is discouraging you, where you can share even the little secrets that you have. Because you only share that with a friend. Praise the name of the Lord. And today I stand here to declare that Jesus is my friend. I don't know whether Jesus is your friend, but Jesus is my friend. When I feel down, when I feel discouraged, I have a friend I can go share with. And you know one thing I love this friendship is that when I tell Jesus this is what is bothering me, I'm not going to hear those news in Worcester. I will not find those news in Springfield. I will not find them in the media. Oh, you know, Pastor Lucy is dealing with this, is dealing with that. No, when we tell Jesus what we are dealing with, he solves our problems. Praise the name of the Lord. Who is Jesus to you? I'm going to ask that again. Who is Jesus to you. Praise the name of the Lord. So we find that Jesus now starts to speak. The next level. Initially it seemed as though Jesus was the one who needed to be taught. It seemed as if uh, they had discovered that he needs more information. We need to teach him. Oh, we need to update him. You see that? It, it, initially that is how it seemed. But soon they discovered that he was their teacher. Because we find that Jesus, the first thing he does is rebuke them. He says, you fool. And slow of heart to believe all the prophets that have spoken. Don't you know that Christ had to suffer? So now he starts to explain to them the mysteries behind his going to the cross, behind his death, and behind his resurrection. He starts to teach them about what the prophets had spoken from the days of old. Praise the name of the Lord. There are some things that we may never get to understand unless we receive a revelation, unless we sit under the feet of Jesus and be taught of him. Praise the name of the Lord. So there's two discovered that Jesus is not only now a friend they can share, but he has gone to another level. He is a teacher. He is the one teaching them the scriptures. Praise the name of the Lord. And you remember that part we have read in verse 32. They were saying, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked on us on the road and opened the scriptures to us. You know, the word of God is simple but deep. 
Amen. The scriptures, they are simple, but deep. The only way to understand scripture is when you are taught of the Lord. These disciples had stayed and walked with Jesus, but still they never understood about how he would come and redeem. But now we find, now they, they have invited Jesus to walk with them and they are sharing with him. He gets to the level now he started to teach them. He starts to open scriptures to them. Have you been having a hard time understanding scriptures? Do you read and don't get anything? I invite you to take your relationship with Jesus to another level. Let Jesus become your teacher. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The disciples on their way to Emmaus, they discover that Jesus is their, is their teacher. And I'm going to ask you today, is Jesus your teacher? From what or from whom do you take your standard for living? When you want to decide the kind of a person you should be, the kind of way in which you should live, the kind of pleasures you should engage in, the kind of intimate friendships you should make, to whom do you go to? Who is the source of your instructions? Who is the source of your guidance? I know we have mentors, I know we have teachers. I know we have therapists and all that. And I'm not discrediting them. But I have come to tell you that the one who can teach us to be as we should be according to the will of the Father is Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you again this question. Who is Jesus to you? Praise the name of the Lord. Is he your teacher? And if he is our teacher, do we submit and obey his will? You know, when I was growing up, if there are people who were respected were teachers. When I was growing up, if there are people who were respected as teachers, you would be in the marketplace just walking around with your mother. And the moment you notice a teacher somewhere, you hide behind your mom because you have seen the teacher. We grew up with great respect for the teacher. I don't know whether you guys have great respect for your teachers, but if there are people who are supposed to be respected are teachers. And the greatest teachers of all is Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So what kind of a relationship do you have? Do you obey him? Hallelujah. Are you willing to submit to his teaching? And so I'm asking you again, who is Jesus to you? Praise the name of the Lord. And then we find that when they got to where they were going, Jesus made as if he want to go further. Did you notice that when we were reading? When they got where they were going, Jesus made as if he was going father but they invited him in i want you to i want you to know that jesus will never force himself on us he awaits our invitation if we're gonna take our relationship deeper and deeper he awaits our invitation if the disciples could have left and told him oh, okay it was nice talking to you you have been wonderful company oh we've learned a lot from you goodbye see you next time if you're around and we we are here this is us and they get in but that's not what they did when jesus made as if he was going further they invited him to sit with them and to dine with them praise the name of the lord and we find that when they got to, to, to the, to di, for di, they sat down for dinner, we find that Jesus took charge. He's the guest, but he took charge. When he was at the temple, Adam, he took the bread, he gave thanks and broke it and began to give to them. And the Bible says their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. Praise the name of the Lord. So we find that Jesus takes charge. He is now not only a stranger.
stranger. He is not just a friend. He is not just a, a, a teacher. But now he gets to another level. He is a master because he is now in control. He is the one breaking the bread. He is the one giving thanks. He is the one giving out to them. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And that is what the Lord desires. You know, when we say that Jesus is Lord over our lives, a Lord is one who has charge, who has control, who has a say, who has authority over you. Praise the name of the Lord. When you say, I am now born again and Jesus is Lord, it means that you are ready to subject to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You are ready to serve his will. You are ready to follow his command. You do not have authority over yourself any longer. You do not control yourself. You do not let the flesh lead you. You surrender to his will. And you surrender to his commands. You surrender to his Lord. Lordship. He becomes the master in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that he took the bread. So the moment he takes you, he takes possession of you. He purchased us for God by his blood. We are no longer our own. Amen. Can you tell your neighbor you are no longer your own? Amen. You are no longer your own. You are a purchased property by the blood of Jesus. You belong to him. So the Bible says he takes the bread, he breaks it, he gives thanks, and then gives it out. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm, I'm hearing a revelation coming here. Although it's not in my note, but I'm just going to say this. When the Lord takes you, sometimes he may take you through some breaking. Hallelujah. When the Lord takes you, he may take you through, through some breaking. And the breaking is to, to break your will, to break your flesh, to break the, the evil desire. Break you, make you, mold you, so that you may be able to be given away and to serve. Praise the name of the Lord. So we find that Jesus is not only a friend. He's not only a teacher, but now he's a master. He is the one leading. He is the one controlling. There's, a, there's somebody who has sung a song in my mother language and he says that when you see somebody doing whatever they're doing, it's not their problem. It's the one who is leading them. It's saying they go telephone. It's the one who is driving them or who, the one who is leading them. So by Checking out how you do whatever you do and the way you live, we can be able to say whether Jesus has gotten to that level where you have invited him in. He becomes a master after he was invited in. He was not a master out there on the road. Out there on the road, he was just a friend and a teacher. Amen. But after he was invited in, he takes charge. He becomes a master. I don't know whether you have invited Jesus in so that he may become your master, so that he may become your Lord, so that he may lead you, so that you may subject yourself to his authority and to his will. Praise the name of the Lord. My time is up. Praise the name of the Lord. And finally, Jesus is our redeemer. Jesus is our redeemer. Verse 21, they said, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. They thought that Jesus was going to redeem the nation of Israel. And, uh, and, and part of their concept, I have explained to you how they thought Jesus is going to redeem Israel. But Jesus said, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Verse 26, he said a very important thing. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? Praise the name of the Lord. I want to read 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 18. 1 Peter. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 18. The Bible says, For as much as you know 
that you are not redeemed with corruptible things. We have not been redeemed with money. We have not been redeemed with gold and silver. We have not been redeemed with anything corruptible. A silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your father. But with the precious blood of Christ as of lamp without blemish and without spot. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world but was manifest in these last times to you who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The kind of redemption that we received was by Jesus going to the cross. I had spoken about this. It was not about him coming with chariots and horses and a mighty army and delivering the Hebrews and the Israelites from the oppression of the Roman Empire. No. Redemption was so that he may redeem us and purchase us not by corruptible stuff, not by gold, not by silver. Yesterday we were watching a movie about how the Israelites were offering sacrifices. And we could see how they could touch an animal and say all our sins upon this animal. And they could slaughter and offer sacrifices. And that was the order of the day. They had to do that. They had to offer those sacrifices. Every end of the year they had to come with a burnt offering. They had to go with a peace offering. They had to go with, a, with, with a, the, an offering to redeem the firstborn and all that. Atonement offering. But when Jesus came, his redemption was final. Because he is the one who took all our sins. And he went on the cross and his blood flowed. And his blood is flowing up to today. So when we relate to Jesus and I ask you this question, who is Jesus to you? I can very well say that Jesus is my redeemer. Because he went on the cross, he redeemed me. I was supposed to suffer that. I was supposed to die. I was supposed to pay for my sins. I was supposed to suffer shame and disgrace. But he took it all. Went on the cross. And sometimes I think about when he was crying and saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabakidari. He was crying and saying, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? You know why? Because our God is holy. And by then Jesus had all the sins of the world. And our God being holy had turned aside. He could not look at his son. Because when he saw what he saw is our sins on, our, on his son. He paid the ultimate price. So today I can be able to answer this question. Who is Jesus to me? Jesus is my redeemer. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know whether you have learned something today. But as I conclude, I want to ask this question again. Who is Jesus to you? Is Jesus a stranger? Is Jesus your friend? Is Jesus your teacher? Is Jesus your master and redeemer? I want to introduce to you, to Jesus who is my friend, my teacher, my master, and my redeemer. I don't want to just teach about him. I want to introduce him. He is here with us. He is alive. As we have read in the book of 1 Peter, he went to down to the grave. He died and rose Again, he came to those two travelers, to the disciples. He walked among them. He opened their eyes. They were able to see. They were able to know him. Praise the name of the Lord. And my prayer today is that our eyes may be opened. Is that our hearts may have that yearning, that great desire to know him better. 
is that we may get to from one level to another. One level to another. That we may not just talk to him as just a friend. One time he told his disciples, I no longer call you servants, but I call you my friends. Because as a friend, I am revealing to you even what is to come. The Bible says that two cannot walk together unless they agree. The Bible says that the secrets of the Lord belongs to those that he loves. Praise the name of the Lord. And as we come to the end of this year, I want to assure you that there is more and more and more that we have not yet seen, we have not had yet known, we have not yet understood. But the Lord is willing. Can he stop being a stranger to you? Can we just get to that level of him becoming a friend? Can we get deeper that he may become a teacher to teach us? Can we get deeper? Invite him in. Let him become your master. Let him be your leader. Let him be your guide. Let yourself subject to the authority of his lordship. Oh, can we have that joy, that joy that comes with the revelation of understanding that he is your redeemer. And you know what is good about him being my redeemer? Is that every debt is paid. Every debt is paid. The sins past, the sins present, any sin. The devil has no hold on us. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Because every debt is paid. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to stand on your feet this morning. And I want you to have a moment of just telling the Lord, I want more. There is that him. In the golden bowels that we used to sing and say more and more about you, Jesus. More of you, Jesus. More of you, Jesus. I don't want you to just be a stranger to me. I just don't want you to be a friend. You know, when we talk about friends, they're those friends who are afar off. But they're those friends who are very close. We say, oh, this is my BFF. Oh, can we make Jesus our BFF, our best friend forever? In the name of Jesus. You know, when we talk about the teachers, we have so many teachers of the world. There is so much knowledge in this world. But if there is a teacher who can teach us the truth because he's the truth, is Jesus Christ. Oh, can we just feel like we want to become like Mary? Oh, when mother was busy preparing food and taking care of the guests, Mary chose to sit at his feet and learn from him. It is my prayer today that we are going to have many Marys of our generation. We are going to have Marys of our generation who are going to choose the most needed thing, who are going to sit at the feet of Jesus and desire to be taught of him because, yes, Jesus is a teacher. Resha Tamando Hosaya. I know that many of us we say and declare that Jesus is Lord but how many can say that he is the master of my soul I do his binding I do the which is his will I only follow him I only do what he tells me to do Oh, Jesus only did what the Father commanded. And today we can choose to get to that level where Jesus is our master. That we may only do that which is in his will. Oh, Shalom Hasaiah. Where we can bring our thoughts captive and bring them to the, to the subjection of the leading of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Where we can say that our flesh will die daily. That we are not going to fulfill that is the desires of the flesh. We are going to walk in the spirit and be led of the Lord. For Jesus is our master. Jesus, you are our redeemer. You are our redeemer. You are our redeemer. You paid the price for 
for us. You pay the debt of sin. We are redeemed of you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for every listener of this word today in this place, oh God. We want to thank you even for those who are listening to us online, oh God. And we pray in the name of Jesus that our relationship with you will get deeper and deeper. You are not going to remain a stranger to us. You're not just going to be a friend. You just, you're going to be a friend. You're going to be a teacher. You're going to be a master. You're going to be a redeemer. We honor you, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. 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 Let's appreciate the Lord with a clap offering. Uh, move around and uh, let's hear who Jesus is to you. Yeah, move around, say hi to somebody, two, three, five people. Let them know who Jesus is to you. Let them know who Jesus is to you. Amen, amen. We can talk about...